Hello and welcome to another episode of Invalid Entry. It is day four, which means we are doing another library, another Python library. Um, not my favourite Python library in the world, I'm afraid, but super powerful. I like this library because I often use Django as my web application framework of choice. That has an inbuilt uh, templating language. Uh, Ginger or Ginger 2, to be precise, again by the Palettes Project, uh, which uh, it's dangerous is by as well, is super powerful for doing templates. So the way it works, uh, we'll get straight into it, and I just want to make sure I have my crib sheet open on the other screen. Is a little bit harder to set up than the other libraries. So you're going to do from Ginger 2 import environment file system loader. Uh, I think we need to select auto escape escape as well. So what we have to do is set up the environment. So env environment. Um, now you can use other loaders. I think they recommend using the package loader. If you're building a web app, you probably want to use a package loader so you can separate out your packages and your templates that go with the packages. Um, um, I'm going to use the file system loader. I put all my templates in one place. And auto escape. Blah, equals select auto escape. So that's basically my setup to begin with. What I have here is I have a folder called templates. Inside the template, I have a HTML file, which is a very ba basic HTML file. And I shouldn't have clicked that. Uh, what I should have done was click that to edit it. So we actually see it in the editor. And it's got this very special thing in the middle, which are two braces and the word thing. And this is where it kind of looks a bit like um, a format, a string format. And you might say, well, if I've got a very simple template, it doesn't matter. The power comes later on when we start using some of the modules and features. So the first thing we do, is we make a template object, so env.get template uh, 1.html. And this will search the fast the loaders it's got loaded as to where that is, and will produce a template object. So what we can then do is we can render data to that template. So template render. Um, now the word here was thing. Oop, was thing in that. I don't want that open at all. Um, so I'm going to pass an argument thing equals hello there. So when that actually runs, it replaces those tags with the things that I pass in. So if that was called uh, Wibble, then I'd say Wibble equals there. Uh, if you're from the Django world and you like contexts, which are just dictionaries, and you want to do thing equals hello there, and because it's a dictionary, it would be a colon. I just want to make sure I haven't gone behind my own screen as I would type. Uh, I'm close to it. It's still good. Um, then what you would do here is you'd still do your template.render, but at this point you would do asterisk, asterisk, um, asterisk, asterisk context to pass that as keyword arguments, and it would still work. Um, what you've got to remember is if you change your template, you have to reload it, because that's actually loaded and effectively compiled the template at that point. Um, so I'm just going to put it on top of there. I'm going to rewrite this. Uh, the power of this is that we can then start doing um, things like array. So maybe we do a database query and it comes back with a bunch of uh, objects. It could be other dictionaries, but we options. So name equals wibble, uh, count equal, is equal to 4, 45. And I want a whole bunch of these. Um, I'm just going to change them a little bit. Ah! Okay, so when I run this, nothing really changes in the output. In my template, what I can now do, because I'm making HTML templates here, by in mind, I can make any text template. So I can make PDFs, uh, I can start injecting things into PDFs, anything I like really in this, which is a text-based language. Um, we now use a different type of tag, which is a brace percentage. I'm going to do four row in data, that's the name of the variable, end four, and four percentage. Yeah. If you have an IDE, there are Ginger plugins to Visual Studio Code, probably PyCharm, things like that as well. Um, so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my table outside. I'm going to end my. There's probably going to be table header stuff like that, but you know, I don't really care about. That. Um, uh, row. Make sure that the template picks up row dot uh, name. Row. Dot count. Okay. 
account. Save that, go back to my Ginger Notebook and run this again. And you now see I've now got that repeating row in here. Okay, so this is now using a second language, the Ginger templating language, to produce higher quality templates. Uh, we could go a little bit further. We can start doing cool things like um, if... Um, oh, pardon me. Again, I'm going to look at my crib sheet to do it right first time, because this time I actually made a crib sheet. <laughs> but I got rid of my crib sheet. So that shows you how um, useful that crib sheet actually was. Uh, one of the things you can do, you can say... Um, um. <laughs> I've forgotten the expression, and the reason I've forgotten the expression is because um, I often I often do it in Django, and it's a little bit different here. So, because it's in a loop, there's a special variable called loop. So, loop dot index is divisible divisible by I don't know three, two, three percentage out. Then what I want to do, notice I'm inside the tag here. I can then say class equals uh, different color, whatever my class name is. I want to close my if off. That. So this if is only going to introduce a different color on every third iteration. So I can save that, run my book again, which is going to reload the template at the top here. And what you now see is that every third one, so one, two, third one has a different color. Four, five, sixth one has a different color. Working perfectly. And you can start filtering these things. You can start doing things like adding in a capitalization or particular spacing uh, of, of the data. So you're separating out the business logic of what data to show. So the logic here, thinking about concentrating your efforts. The logic here will be about making the correct query in the database or processing the information. Whereas the, the, the code here is about how you display that information to your end user. And it gives you a better quality output. You can go further on this as well. What you can actually do is you can use templates to do cool things. And this is where you decide how your implementation wants to work. There's two main ways of doing this. One is to have a base template like this and then have an area for the main body. So you might have a, what's called a block. So here it would be block um, and it would be main body. Ugh. Like that. This block, you can put some default content in there. And then what you can do is into templates, you can have a new text file called um, to.html. And this will extend um, uh, one.html. I don't have to do anything, I just block main body and then end block and here I might do my code which I did previously which was um, I think what was my what was my top variable called thing there we go thing like this at this point calling the one HTML will give us the default content calling the two will give us a syntax error because I've done it wrong uh, and the reason I've done it wrong is because I wrote extend and it should be extends like that there you go. I, and I'll explain why I didn't get that wrong in a second. Um, apparently I've still got it wrong. One. But so this should be in quote marks. C. Practice beforehand before you do your once through recordings. There you go. And you notice here that it's now pulled in the base template. So you might use your base template to define headers, uh, footers. Uh, maybe the sidebar goes in here. And that's one way of doing it. Um, the other way of doing it is that you may have a template you want to use, but you have some kind of special sidebar. So instead of this here, you can actually do an include uh, sidebar.html. That was a bit of a weird lag there. And what that would do is it will grab that sidebar and then copy and paste it in. You can use that if you've got repeatable snippets that you want to use throughout your pages where you didn't have a common base, perhaps. So a combination of both techniques is really powerful. Um, I love Ginger. Uh, I love the Django templating. I believe Ginger was based upon the Django templating, but I may have that backwards. 
Um, using the different filters, using the difference between, remember the difference between uh, brace percentage and brace brace is really important. I think when I started out, getting those two backwards was something I did an awful lot of. Um, and the other thing that you should get into hand of is filters. Um, so there are a bunch of standard filters and I will try and find one of them. Now the Django ones are different to the other ones. So there's one here for example which is word wrap. So with filters you can basically uh, pipe a variable through and then change what it looks like. So it is worth looking at the documentation, it is worth looking at, at how you can use these various things, but you kind of need individual um, use cases to be able to look at these. So you could look at absolute, you could say if I have a number I actually want to change how how uh, many decimal points. So if you're outputting like scientific output and it's gone five or six decimal points, you say no I only want to show two. So you can filter that in the in the visible template layer, not in your business logic calculation layer. Um, it also helps if you're doing lazy stuff. So if you're lazy loading from a database, then you don't want to iterate over the data here to manipulate data and then manipulate it, iterate it over again in your template. You can do visible stuff in the template. Um, slightly longer video today because there is a lot in this. This is a, a templating language. If you're not using templates at the moment, you really should be. Um, there are different versions of this. There are other templating solutions out there. I use this for everything from web pages to generating emails to generating uh, texts. I generate it when I've got a complicated text structure or output uh, for console. I sometimes use a template. Um, I use snippets. I use all kinds of things. Um, and I absolutely love Ginger. It's a very lightweight library. Um, so if you don't want the full power Django, if you're going to be writing Flask, you should use templates like this. Ginger templates are the way to go. So I fully recommend this. Just before I sign off today, I want people to remind that actually it is Team C's. Um, I am just in the end of the crypto phase of Team C's here. But here is Team C's org. Uh, they are currently trying to remove £30 million, which means raising $30 million by the end or by the 1st of January and they're currently at and wow my computer is running slow at the moment they're currently at them somewhere in the region of 16 or 17 million dollars which is an amazing figure well over halfway we're just past the halfway point as well so if you haven't yet I would recommend sending uh, the price of a cup of coffee something like that to Team Seas because they are going to rem actively remove plastics from the world ocean and that will have a measurable impact on the future of this planet so please 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 if you haven't already please donate to Team Seas Thank you very much.